Hi guys, the topic that we're discussing today is highly controversial and it's something that might get me in trouble. But I'll still go ahead and talk about it because it's kind of important. Um, now, there's a, this is a graph between code complexity and years of programming, right? So, when you start out as a programmer, you start writing very simple code. And, and then you, and a lot of people who are on this journey, right? Uh, and these are the, uh, you know, mostly people uh, <coughs> that are like, let's say, about two months, three months, six months, uh, one year into into learning the programming language. Um, they, they then they try to learn concepts like OOP. Then they learn some design patterns. Then they learn. Uh, then uh, then they want to use interfaces everywhere to have a lot of abstractions. And uh, what what starts happening right now is that you're writing a lot of code to get uh, something very small done, right? And there's a lot of I might need this later kind of philosophy where. Uh, you think you know you'll write tests you'll write you know all uh, like very detailed tests you'll write very detailed uh, you know interfaces and you'll try to you'll try to use uh, things that are, may not be important or critical to that uh, project like for example using routines everywhere uh, i'm talking about golang uh, you know uh, so you'll basically you'll try to use things that you don't need right now or it's not critical for that product but uh, you think you might need this later or uh, it's just you know uh, ha or having a very complex or very big project structure uh, and when you think i might need this later you mean you're saying basically that if new functionalities come out later then you'll have to uh, you know then you might need this big pro uh, architecture or if you uh, you know if your team grows and your uh, and me more people join your team then obviously you'll need a more scalable project architecture right uh, what happens is that um, when you when you have to deal with such a big project structure or when you have to deal with so much so much complexity like app, like interfaces and all in your code um, you end up writing a lot of code and spending a lot of time, a lot of planning to get very few features out the door. And when you're um, in the beginning, right, when you're, let's say, working in a small company that needs to get its product out in the market, uh, you don't actually end up learning a lot uh, from the market. So there are two types of learning. One is learning the prog programming language and learning the technology, but one is the learning from uh, the market. So uh, if, you, if you want more information about this, you should read this book called the lean startup by Eric Rye. So he says that our main objective is to learn from the market in the sense, learn in as short time as possible. So uh, build features quickly, uh, put it out, uh, put out an MVP out in the market quickly, then learn it. And then uh, most of the companies, like almost like 85 to 90% of the companies, they don't even uh, get accepted by the market. So people don't even end up using those products or features. And imagine you ended up writing all the design patterns, you ended up writing interfaces and all those you know, routines and channels and all those high, uh, you know, high science concepts you use and with the big project architecture. And you spent hours writing tests and you launched that product and nobody used it, right? That's the biggest failure according to Eric Rai in the Lean Startup book. And not, uh, you know, uh, so basically he's saying that just write um, like really basic level code put it out in the market uh, put out features and products let people use them if people actually so 90 percent of the products don't make it there right and if people start using it that's when you actually uh, probably uh, not rewrite the code but refactor it a lot to change the architecture and change the project structure so i have made a lot of mistakes in the beginning of my career when i was doing all of this right and um, but as you as you mature as a, as a developer right you understand that Okay, so super simple code is the way to go because uh, what happens here is that you can get more people on your team uh, and you know even even the young people who join your team can start understanding your code very easily. Uh, so I'm not talking about only startups here, but even for big companies, like let's say for startups, obviously super simple code is very important because like I said, you, know, need to, you need to get a lot of features out in the market quickly to test if the market responds to it and then you can probably start implementing all this. But even for big companies, like let's say uh, uh, a company like Amazon, uh, somebody who has spent a lot of years uh, doing programming, he would, you know, start with super simple code and then he'll do all of this and then he'll start writing super simple code again. Why? Because he's now he's so mature. He's he spent like eight to ten years in the in the industry and now he realizes that, uh, you know, for him to understand it. So in the sense, if some, something breaks, right, he'll have only have to fix it. So why not write super simple code in the beginning itself so that you know when something breaks, you you have to come back and fix it. Or if there is this junior guy who joins the team, he is going to really keep chasing this senior guy who's written the code to uh, explain everything, all this to him, right? So rather he'll just write simple code so that uh, just give the simple code to the juniors who have joined uh, and they can easily onboard themselves because the code is super simple. So as you mature as a developer, I'll say like eight to 10 years, you start writing super simple code. So what I'm trying to say is, 
if you're somebody who's here, right? This is so this is the crux. This is the whole point that I'm getting at. If you're somebody who's new and you're learning all this, that's great, all right? But think two times or three times before applying these uh, uh, techno these uh, what do you call it methods or these methodologies or these design patterns into your project because uh, think about <clears throat> like how uh, the market is going to respond to the product itself. All right, that's the business viability of the product that you're building. And second is, um, will other people be able to easily onboard themselves on this project once the team starts growing? So these two things are you need to think about. And what I'm saying is, why don't you just save eight to 10 years of your time, okay, and write super simple code always, <laughs> because after eight to 10 years, you'll, you'll anyways write super simple code, right? So I get a lot of uh, comments on my uh, channel saying that, hey, why don't you use interfaces? <laughs> why don't you use, uh, you know, all these different things? It's because this is where I am, man. I mean, you have to understand the context. I was here and I've done all this. And now I'm again here using super simple code, all right? So this is why I try to uh, keep things really simple in most of the projects. But I also try to teach these because uh, these are important, but um, like 80% of the time, you won't end up using it, to be honest with you, all right? Uh, people will differ with me. Obviously, people have different opinions. And uh, uh, But this is what I've learned. This is an actual graph I found somewhere on the internet. I don't know who's made it. Uh, whoever he, who's made it is, you know, uh, the real deal. I mean, he knows how the industry works. So uh, always save eight to 10 years of your time. Always write super simple code. Learn all this, but always keep writing super simple code. And think five, two to three times before you implement any, uh, you know, high, like really advanced concepts in your code because you're going to have a hard time scaling your team uh, after if your product starts doing well. All right, so remember this. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope you understood the message clearly. Uh, I'm not sure if I was able to explain it, but I've done my best to explain it because uh, you have to go through this process to actually understand it. So that's why I'm trying to explain it. But uh, once you go through it, you'll understand it. But I want to save your time, those eight years that I've spent, eight to 10 years I've spent going through this process and understanding it on my own. I want you to do it right now and just always be uh, writing super simple code, all right? Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next uh, videos.